Back with the crew on Inside Tennessee, we've confirmed that John North is indeed in the city of Knoxville. Uh, John North, uh, let's move to the amendments that Knox County voters voted on. Both of them went down. Let's deal with Amendment 1 first, and that was whether voters would continue to elect a law director or if that position would then be appointed by the mayor, whoever it might be. Uh, mayor Jacobs is in that office now. Voters said, no, we want to keep voting this in. Your thoughts? That crashed about as hard as anything I have ever seen in Knox County. I think that probably crashed harder than any wheel tax proposal I've ever seen in Knox County. I mean, that died a hard death. We heard you loudly and clearly, but maybe it's the way it was worded. So yeah, we're gonna be stuck with, uh, or excuse me, we will continue to elect uh, a law director until charter review tries again. Uh, you know, I looked at the numbers and what struck me about that is it wasn't a partisan issue. It happened all over. Democrats, Republicans, they were all like, no, no, no. And then the uh, second item, John, uh, which also went down and defeat and surprised us was the whole issue of being more transparent about the mayor having to report the contracts that he was signing off and arranging on in terms of a dollar amount. And they said, no, we, we are not going to make him do that, which I thought was surprising. It is interesting. A lot of people calling that the transparency uh, amendment, which voters said we're fine with the way it is. And Don and Susan, your perspective, because voters have had the opportunity to choose at least on Amendment 1 before, Don. Well, I said this earlier in the week when we were doing coverage. Uh, amendment 1, I, it makes absolute sense as a lawyer and a, and a citizen of this community to have the mayor appoint uh, law director, much like the city does. It works very well over there. It takes the, the, the partisanship and, and separation, so to speak, uh, out of it if somebody has different agendas. But the public's not going to go for it. So I, I treated this like maybe we look at this like we've looked at metro government. We're not going to pass metro government like Davidson County, but maybe we can start dividing the county law director's office up so the different fiefdoms, so to speak, that they have to represent can have some independence and maybe do it another way that's appropriate, cost effective. And I think charter, I think the second charter amendment failed because the first one was just so bad and so poorly written. I actually think there was just a bleed over effect. Who wouldn't want to know what the mayor's spending our money on? That's really confusing to me. Susan? Yeah, I think I think there's no question. I was I felt all along that the first amendment was gonna go down in flames and it did. Look, Republicans control the courthouse. And why in the world would they give up an another elected position? Uh, as long as one party is in control, you know, why not? Susan, and let's it, stick it, with you uh, because we want to touch on the Burchett Hoyos race. Uh, Congressman Burchett winning a second term in office and beating someone who challenged him before in Renee Hoyos. What do you make of the results of that race? Well, uh, Renee actually got two percentage points less this time than she did against uh, Congressman Burchett before. Um, Tim is a good congressman. He, um, he does his homework when he comes to Knoxville. He's frugal. Uh, he actually passed legislation, the first time congressman, and that's unusual. Uh, he's been a good congressman. And I think he's gonna be there as long as he wants. I, I don't imagine that Renee will run again. I'd be very surprised if uh, in the future the Democrats can find a legitimate candidate to run against him. Don, your take so, on that race. Yeah, uh, you know, Renee did lose by about a point and a half uh, more than she did last time, but she also generated more Democrat votes by a substantial sum, I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, than she did previously, bringing out a Democrat vote. Renee is a credible, good candidate. You know, we're going to find somebody eventually to run. This seat obviously has a Republican history dating back to just at the end of the Civil War. It's always going to be tough. But, you know, we've seen deep red or deep blue seats shift. And, and, and uh, Tim's there. He's going to be there for a while. But, uh, you know, you never know. We I hope Renee stays involved uh, in elected politics or in efforts to get into elected politics. But I'll be surprised if she runs a third time as well. John, there are four members of the House that really touch East Tennessee. Burchett, Desjardins, Fleischman are familiar names that are going back. But we have an unfamiliar name who is replacing Dr. Phil Rowe. Yeah, that's that was a pretty flinty race. Diana Harshbarger is going to be the new rep for the 1st Congressional District. 
I don't guess there probably was any doubt that she would win. Um, she uh, won in a very spirited and tough primary in August, and um, I'm, I know her. I know her opponent worked very hard to try and um, dig into her lead, but it was going to be a tough uh, road to hoe. And Diana Harshbarger sounds pretty conservative. I'd be curious about what other folks say, but she sounded very. She's lined herself up hard with Trump as well, I think. Susan, 15 well, I, seconds. 